What's up everybody, Cigar Sherpa Laird Mayhew back with another cigar review and today I'm smoking the new or fairly new CAO Zocalo in Robusto. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back to another installment here at Cigar Sherpa. I, of course, am your host, Laird Mayhew. And if this is your first time here, go ahead and find the subscribe button. Go ahead for the little thumbs up and a thumbs down. Go ahead and pick one of those. I don't care. Up, down, it doesn't matter to me. And there's a little bell over there somewhere. If you'll go ahead and hit that, it'll notify you whenever we release a, view, a review. And if this is not your first time here, well, then welcome back as always. All right. So as my intro said, I have a new-ish cigar. I think it came out uh, when did it come out? May, maybe, or April time frame? It might even have been March. I don't know. I remember the day it came, or the day that it hit my B&M. You know, they pointed it out to me. I went ahead and grabbed one, and it's kind of been laying up in my humidor, and uh, I was going to go ahead and review it. I've just been sitting on it, because honestly, CAO is just one of those brands from General Cigar that I'm not excited about. Um, I got excited about the uh, Mortal Coil, because there was a lot of hype around it, and I wouldn't necessarily call it hype, but a lot of people with similar palettes as mine were all over it. So I, I had to grab it and uh, try it out. And that's just the way I do. If I hear a guy that I, you know, that I trust his palate and he's talking up a cigar, I'm going to go check it out for sure. Um, hadn't really heard much about this one. I haven't watched any reviews on it. I kind of forgot about it. I was kind of shifting my humidor around because I got some sticks coming in from overseas. Um, hopefully be here uh, by Monday or Tuesday. Got me some Partaga Series D and I got me some... What did I get? Some Bolivar? I think it was Bolivar. I can't remember. It was like two weeks ago when I ordered it and they just finally shipped. So anyway, I found this and I was like, well, this is a newer cigar and I really want to try it. It's got a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, but it's got a Moran. I don't know what that is. Be honest with you. It says uh, Moran wrapper, um, Mexican Moran wrapper grown in uh, San Andreas. So there you go. It's got a Cameroon binder. And uh, it's got Nicaraguan fillers. Now, as far as the Cameroon binder goes, I'm going to assume that is from Africa uh, because they didn't specify that it was Ecuadorian Cameroon, which sometimes kind of throws me for a loop because I'm like, why would you call it an Ecuadorian Cameroon wrapper when really a Cameroon wrapper is essentially an Indonesian wrapper grown in Cameroon? You know, or you know, what I'm saying it's it's it, so if you know that the Indonesian the the tobacco is not indigenous to Cameroon and the Dutch settlers or invaders <laughs> if you want to call them uh, the Dutch Vikings came in and they took over Cameroon but with that they brought trade and they brought uh, agriculture their agriculture and part of that agriculture was tobacco from Indonesia and there you go a little history lesson I think I brought that up before whenever I was talking about the Cameroon wrapper. But this cigar, um, surprisingly, as soon as I pulled it out of the wrapper and started looking at it and sniffing on it and examining it, I got kind of excited. Now I'm excited to smoke it. Um, it's got a dark brown wrapper. It's oily. It's toothy. Um, it's not very veiny. It's got visible seams, but they're tight, and it's got a very large double cap, and it's placed on there great. It, for, a, for a 5x52 Robusto cigar, the size of it, I mean, it's it's hefty but not you know it's not too heavy but it's not very light and airy it's just it, very nice i do see two holes there i don't know if y'all gonna be able to see that or not um that look like you know in the roll there that might cause some burn issue but the smell on it is kind of like a spicy it's barnyardy but it's like a spice on there too like a peppery spice and off the foot there, it's got like a, it's earthy, but it's almost like a musty, not musty earth, but like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a musk, like, you know, like a musk smell. I don't know. It's musky. That's hard to describe. Usually I, 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 I attribute a musky smell coming off like a deer that's in rut or even the old cologne, the musk from Jovan or whatever. It had that musky smell to it. But uh, yeah, so... Uh, I'm going to give this thing a cut and a light, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to tell you what I think about it. Stay tuned. All right, all right. Right here on the light up. Let me go ahead and purge any of that, because I really had to really had to sit that soft flame on there. Maybe I probably would have served, been served better with my torch, but it's kind of acting up on me. There we go. Let me just kind of round that out. All right, let me get a hit off of this thing, and I'll let you know what it's uh, reporting. It 
It's got a really nice draw. Mm. So right away, it's got a, of course there's black pepper on it. It's got Nicaraguan tobacco. Um, and it's pretty heavy on the, uh, the retro health initially. Um, but I am getting just wood. I don't know. It's not like cedar. It's probably more like an oak, but I'm just going to call it wood for now. The smoke is very... It's got a very full smoke. It's not yet creamy, but it's uh, very full. Yeah, that's oak for sure on the retro hail. Uh, a little bit of leather, maybe, on the on the palate. A little bit of citrus, too. So like I said, this is my first time with this cigar. Like, it's been sitting in my humidor for, I don't know, whenever it came out. Two months now, maybe. Not really sure. But it, uh, like I said, it feels really nice, though. It is, it's performing well so far. But I'm going to bring it into the, uh, come back in the, further in the first third. And I'm going to tell you what I think about it. Stay tuned. All right, all right. We are well into the first third. And I got to tell you, I'm digging it. I really am digging it. It has got... Just about everything I like in a cigar. Um, I really like the size. That's like my favorite size. 5x50, 5x52 Robusto. That's my favorite size. Maybe if it's a 48, I'm not mad about it either. But um, So anyway, the black pepper, just go over the... Because I, you know, I list down as I'm, <laughs> I'm giving the, you know, the flavor nuance. The black pepper kind of fades. Um, but it's very nice. It's still there. I still got like a nice tangle on my palate, but you do feel it in the retro hell, but it just fades away. That wood is essentially to me now, um, a so solid oak, um, wood, but it's very smooth, almost creamy oak. I don't know. I've said creamy cedar before. There are... There's a there's a very strong, when I say hint of, there, there's a very strong hint of like a nice powdery cocoa and there's a sweetness on that and the sweetness is kind of reminded me of like a dried fruit sweetness but lightly i don't know it's weird so i, I wouldn't necessarily put a a raisin or a dried raspberry or anything like that it's just like a dried fruit cocoa sweetness smokes very uh very full smoke um medium long finish and there is that I think in the first uh, light up I mentioned there was like some citrus and it's like some citrus on the palate, but it's like an orange, not like a lemon zest or just an all out cit citrus, like a like an orange zest, but like a sweeter orange zest on the palate. I really like it. I really do. Now, anyway. I hope everybody out there is living and doing their thing and doing good, um, you know, here on the East Coast. Uh, you know, fishing season opened up officially this past weekend. I was down there yesterday. Um, didn't catch anything. I've caught a few bluefish, you know, to use for bait. No kingfish, no Spanish mackerel yet, but hey, I'm probably a little premature, but I get like that, you know, just as soon as I can get down there, <laughs> I'm in a tournament and I want to be like the first, you know, I, I don't know at the pot, if I can whoever catches the first kingfish is about a thousand $1,500 pot and just the bragging rights really I don't care about the money but I think I'm going to go back down tomorrow but turkey hunting season's open so I got to go do some of that too I don't know anyway I'm not going to bore you with my life story I'll come back in the second third tell you what I think about it from there stay tuned All right, all right. We are in the second third. And that ash literally just fell off. I mean, it was a good inch, maybe a little more than an inch. Nice and tight. And when it hit the ashtray, it hit with a thud. So this is a damn good cigar. Um, so I didn't really touch on it in the first segment, but, you know, you may know, you may not know. I'm going to tell you anyway. This was a, uh, this is a re-release of a limited release that was released in 2018. Okay, it was released only in one size. I think it was a six by sixty. I think they called it a Gigante or a Gordo or something like that. It's one of those big cigars, typically out of my wheelhouse. I don't really like to smoke those cigars. Although I did smoke one this morning. I posted it on my Instagram. Never had it before. I don't even know what I paid for. It's it's called a Kismet. 
Um, and it, man, all Dominican Puro was a very good cigar. I'm about to get some more of those. Um, if you enjoy Dominican Puros, you know, Dominican wrappers, it was very good. Anyway, I digress. So this one here, um, I think it was about $7, $8. Very, very, very good price stick. And up until this moment, it's a very good stick. I'm really enjoying it. In the second third, we don't have many transitions from the uh, from the first, except the the spice, the nutmeg, a nutmeg spice kind of creeps in here, and it's it's pretty prominent now. Still got that woody, oaky, although the oak oakiness has kind of faded to the back. It's still woody. The cocoa is more chocolate now. Um, it's real rich, creamy smoke now, and uh, the pepper fades. It's there. So if you're like a if you're a full body, full strength, pepperhead cigar guy, this is one that would be in your wheelhouse. Although it's not up there as like a powerhouse pepper, the pepper is very subtle. Yeah, it's in the retro hail, but it really settles in on on the palate and leaves like a nice tangle in your medium to long finish, and it's kind of an oily finish too. Still got citrus, okay? The citrus is more now like on the retro hail and at the end of the retro hail. I just kind of get like a nice sweet orangey type sweet sweetness. So I don't know. That's just me. The cigar in general is pretty sweet. I mean, it's got a nice sweetness. It's like a tobacco, uh, dried fruit, orangey citrus type sweet. And like I said, it's pretty complex. Not overly, you know, not crazy complex. But uh, it's got you got some good flavor transitions in there, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. So anyway, so I was watching um, in between. I was watching the uh, the live stream. I caught a little bit of it last night. I was just finishing it up today on Ron Reel's site. He had uh, four other or three other um, cigar reviewers. I think he had Cigar Prop. He had Lee Mac 912, and he had um, was it Ashhead? I, I was just watching it too. So. One of the things that they were talking about was like not the cigar industry, but like the cigar community and, you know, what they what their thoughts on the cigar community was. And since I wasn't invited on the show, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm gonna give you all, it's an interesting question because I've been smoking cigars now since 1997. So do the math on that about 22, 23 years. OK. And when I first started um, smoking cigars, I really never liked the cigar community. I like cigars. Love cigars, fell in love with them almost immediately, and was immersed in them. You know, for you know, so much so that when I was in Afghanistan, I got pictures I posted on my Instagram on top of mountains. You know, on patrol with friends of mine, we're smoking like this. You know, punch cigars and bolivars and stuff like that. I had sent over. Um, we even had a um, we even had a, a pelican box. If you know what a pelican box, a tough box, almost like a big cooler, I guess. A little thick box. You know, it, it's it, it's rugged. And I converted that into a humidor because I had about 15 boxes of cigars. And uh, so, you know, so it, the humidity, I put those little, you know, those foamy ones you buy and you put the solution in there, you put it in, you know, it keeps it humidified. But it, it was so hot in the daytime that we had to dig a hole under the tent and put it in there. But at night it would get too cold, so we had to take it out. So it kind of keep them climatized. And I, we lugged that thing around for six months in Afghanistan. It took me about three months to get all my cigars over there get people to send them. But, you know, I would go on patrol for three days. So I would have to leave somebody in charge, like make sure that, you know, by 10 o'clock in the morning, this trunk gets put here. And then by eight o'clock at night, it goes back in or out reverse, whatever. But anyway, the cigar community for a long time for me was kind of like, not for me. I felt like I was not welcomed into it because the guys that knew uh, they, they didn't have no YouTube and stuff like that. All you had was written reviews, and they were kind of snobby, I guess. And the guys that really had some cigar knowledge, they weren't wanting to talk to you because they were kind of like, I hate to say it, I don't know how else to classify it. They were just kind of like upper class, snooty type people. You know, cigar lounges were full of, you know, older, wealthier guys in suits or golf shirts talking about golf. And so I didn't golf. I didn't do any of that. I didn't make a lot of money. So I kind of felt standoffish. But here, in the last two and a half, three years since I've been back in the United States living full time and, you know, going to cigar lounges and now there's YouTube and I've got a YouTube channel. I find that it's the diversity 
that I, like I said, I've witnessed in the last three years, the diversity of the cigar community is what is great now. Okay, as opposed to it was when I first started, and I like it. And you go to the cigar lounge now, and there's every there's people from all walks. You still got those guys that play golf, you know, and they come in with their golf buddy, you know, Chip and Chaz and Kip, you know. But at the same time, you got guys like me, you got working class guys. You know, I'm in a military town, so there's soldiers and there, and everybody just gets no matter what, where you're from, what you look like, what your skin tone is. It's very very mixed. And you just feel welcome now. And people will talk to you about it. And these new guys that have, you know, questions about it. That's one of the reasons why I started the channel. Um, I found that on Facebook and the forums and stuff that I was essentially helping guys that were new to it. They would ask questions. And immediately you got haters. People like, ah, they start talking trash to them. And I would message them and be like, hey, you should try this and blah, blah, blah. And the reason why this is happening is because of humidity. And that's how I got the name Cigar Sherpa. I didn't even make that up. It was Joe Cowley um, that I met on Facebook. And I think he, I think I told this story before. He texted me. He was going to buy some cigars or something. He wanted my opinion. And I gave it to him. And I gave him the rundown. Probably long-winded, as I am. <laughs> I'm at seven minutes in this segment. But uh, he he mentioned, or he said, he said something to the effect of that I was his Cigar Sherpa. And he thanked me. And then it kind of stuck. About that time. That's when I decided I was going to go on YouTube with it, you know, and hopefully that there's people out there that are new to it that take something out of it. So anyway, that would be my take on uh, that question on how what I think is good or what's grown or whatever about cigar community coming from somebody that's been in it for 20 plus years is the diversity of it. And I and I love it. So that would be it. And if you want to watch that episode, it is um, it's Ron Real TV. And it's the one with, uh, like I said, Cigar Prop. I think his name is Kevin. Um, Lee Mac 912 who you probably already know who he is. I'm sure you do if you watch Cigar. If you Google Cigar Review, he pops up. Um, and then Ashhead uh, TV. So go check that out. And I'm going to come back in the final third and tell you what I think about it. Stay tuned. All right, all right. We are in the final third. And I will tell you that this cigar has landed on my, well, I can't say go-to because I don't have any more, but as of tomorrow, I'm going back and I'm buying a box. This is a damn good cigar. And I can't believe I sat on it because it's a CAO cigar. They typically don't excite me. Um, they make good cigars. You know, I like the Brasilia. I like the Cameroon. You know, like some other the other stuff. I just don't get excited about them. I don't know why. Um... This one's got a little split in the wrapper, but overall, the burn has been great. The draw has been perfect. The density, the smoke output has been really good. The flavors have just been, I just, I like it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and you know, not much has really changed from the, the end of the second, third, except for maybe I think that I can kind of taste the Cameroon tobacco in it here as it gets shorter. That sweet, creamy nuance that you get from a Cameroon wrapper. I'm, I'm kind of getting that now. Maybe. Maybe it's just my mind playing tricks on me. But I'm really enjoying it. The, the, the chocolate does pick up. The pepper actually ramps up a bit. More on the palate. Still in the retro hail. I don't think I really touched on the fullness or the, you know, the, the scale. I think it's billed as medium plus. I'm not really sure about that. So it was medium plus for me throughout the whole cigar. But here in the final third, I'm going to say it's full bodied. Okay, probably still medium plus on. There's some strength. I still I'm getting a little a little woozy from the the tobacco kick that it's given the buzz, whatever you want to call it. But uh, uh, I don't know. I'm going to say it's pretty complex too. So I'm going to say it's medium plus bodied medium plus strength full flavored that's what i'm gonna say um if i was gonna scale it you know on like say a scale of 10 i would probably put this at about an eight to nine i mean it's just this is just my palate i like the chocolate the cocoa i like the the sweetness I really like the sweetness um the oak is almost gone the, the woodiness is damn near gone let me just see hold on a second because I, I haven't really thought about it in the last like 10 minutes or so.
maybe a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Maybe more nutty now. And the citrus has pretty much died off. And typically, I don't like citrus. But when you mix in that citrus with some sweet, you know, who don't like that? Very good. So, anyway, um, so this cigar was, what, seven, eight bucks? I definitely recommend this cigar as a daily arsenal smoke, you know, put it in your in your little daily, you know, ammo can and carry it around because the price is right and it's a really good cigar. I can't believe that it's only, you know, an eight buck cigar and I can't believe it didn't really get that much hype that, that I saw. I mean, I, I I didn't really hear much about it, put it that way. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. I've been busy. Oh. So. I'm going to keep smoking this thing down. You know, here in the final third, I did know. I just inhaled a little bit on accident. I did notice a little bit of like a metallic-y taste on the palate. Almost leady, like like a pencil lead. It's very faint, and it's about the only thing that I would ding the cigar on. I'm not even going to ding it on the, you know, uh, the construction's great. Even though the, the burn line now isn't exactly like razor sharp, um, the ash has been very, very thick. It's burned perfect, draws perfect, construction's been great. It's a good cigar. And you this is <laughs> what else am I gonna say about it? Maybe I'm just running out of things to say, but I'm at four minutes anyway. So anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up here. This is the CAO Zocalo. It's a Robusto, it's a five by fifty two, Mexican San Andreas, Maron, Maron, whatever that means. Um wrapper, Cameroon binder, Nicaraguan fillers. Good cigar, check it out. Cigar Sherpa Laird Mayhew reminding you to be polite to everybody that you meet. But always have a backup plan in case things go south. And I'm out.